In June of 2023, a group of hikers set out to hike Southern California's Mount Baldy. The group's organizer, an anonymous woman, was excited to get some miles in, but she also had a strangely unique fear stuck in the back of her mind. As she began to climb, she couldn't quite shake this chilling thought. I hope we don't find a dead body today. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I've had this same thought at the start of some of my hikes before, but it's always been kind of a morbid joke to myself. Never once did I have that thought and actually think there was a real chance of me stumbling across a dead body during my hike. For the woman in this story, however, this wasn't just a paranoid thought and it certainly wasn't a joke. She really was worried that her group would discover a dead body while making their way up Mount Baldy and she had good reason for this fear. Five months earlier, a famous British actor had set out into the very same area that the group was now hiking up, and this actor had vanished without a trace. Searches for him were extensive, but had turned up nothing. Because of the man's fame, the group leader knew that if her fears were confirmed true, and they did in fact discover his body, their discovery would be making international headlines by nightfall. But regardless of these fears, the group set out and the first few hours of their hike went by as planned. I'm sure at this point, the woman's fears were finally starting to subside. However, these fears would soon come rushing back because deep into the canyon, one of the group members spotted a stray boot. And then they spotted a wallet and inside that wallet, they found a driver's license, which confirmed the nagging fear the group leader had been feeling since departing from the trailhead. The group had discovered the remains of British actor Julian Sands, and they had accidentally solved a mystery that had been plaguing the hiking community, Hollywood, and the news media since the previous winter. This is the tragic story of Julian Sands' last hike. Now, folks, this is a really sad story, but I do think that there's a lot we can learn from it, and it's for that reason that I'd like to thank our sponsor, Decathlon, for making this video possible in the first place. And speaking of learning, did you know that the outdoor industry is trying to outsmart you? If you've ever tried to buy a down jacket or puffer jacket before, you'll know how ridiculously expensive they can be. Your average 800 fill RDS certified down jacket can run anywhere from $150 up to $300, or honestly, a lot of the time they're even more than that. It's ridiculous. And the reason it's ridiculous is because you're not really paying the high price for the gear itself. You're actually paying the high price for the logo and the brand name, which in my opinion is total BS. Decathlon, however, is breaking this cycle. They're proving that you can have high quality gear at a fantastic price. And uh, if you don't believe me, check this out. This is Decathlon's MT100 down jacket. And the price of the MT100 is only $99.99, which already sounds unbelievable. I thought they were joking, to be honest, when I first saw it, but it gets even more unbelievable when you hear these stats. Decathlon's MT100 down jacket consists of 800 fill down insulation. It's water repellent. It keeps you warm down to 23 degrees Fahrenheit, and it only weighs 10 ounces. That's right a 10 ounce down jacket for only $100. So many outdoor companies are taking advantage of their customers, but Decathlon is different. Hit the link in the description to go grab yourself an MT100 and keep yourself warm on your next adventure without breaking the bank. I really do believe this is the best deal you're gonna find on an ultralight down jacket. So once again, hit that link in the description right now. And thank you so much for Decathlon for supporting this channel. All right, let's get into the story. On January 13th, 2023, Julian Sands set out from his home in North Hollywood, California to hike Mount Baldy, which is a 10,000 plus foot peak in the San Gabriel Mountains. Now, Mount Baldy is a popular mountain, but that doesn't mean that it's not dangerous. Mount Baldy is the frequent site of emergency hiker rescues and also, unfortunately, 
hiker deaths. In fact, this is not even the first time I've covered an incident that happened on Mount Baldy on my channel. Despite the danger of taking on a 10,000 plus foot peak in the dead of winter, Julian Sands was, at least in theory, prepared. According to the New York Times, Sands had climbed Mount Baldy approximately 200 times, including numerous times in the winter. He was no amateur. He was even quoted saying, I like it in the winter. Winter conditions make it a bit more interesting. Perhaps another thing that Sands liked about hiking in the winter was the extra solitude that it provides. I assume this was especially valuable to him in particular because he had lived much of his adult life in the Hollywood spotlight. Julian Sands was born in England, and like most actors, he got his start by playing small roles in films and TV series. He appeared in films and series such as The Sun Also Rises, A Married Man, and The Killing Fields. And he eventually landed a lead role in the romance film A Room with a View. Shortly after this success, Sands moved from England to the United States, to Hollywood specifically, to continue his career. By 2000, 2011, Julian Sands was basically a household name. After moving to the US, he appeared in numerous movies and TV shows, including Warlock, The Phantom of the Opera, and The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, among many others. Julian Sands' fame makes his story a very unique one for this channel. I've never covered a story where a celebrity was the main focus of a hiking mystery. However, each story I cover always does have its own unique twist, and so I encourage you to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already so that you won't miss any future videos. You'll also be helping us reach our goal of 300,000 subscribers. We're, we're ticking up there and I really appreciate it. But anyways, Julian Sands was clearly an experienced and accomplished actor. Anyone who knew of him understood that. But what a lot of people did not know was that Sands was also an experienced and accomplished hiker, even you could say a mountaineer. In addition to those 200 ascents of Mount Baldy that I mentioned a few minutes ago, Sands had also hiked extensively in the Alps and in the Andes, where in 1990, he nearly lost his life. He was quoted saying, in the Andes, caught in an atrocious storm over 20,000 feet with three others. We were all in a very bad way. Some guys close to us perished. We were lucky. Unfortunately, Sands' luck would run out in 2023. On the morning of January 23rd, he began hiking up the Baldy Bull Trail all by himself. And once again, this was completely normal for him. But one thing that was not normal was that by 7.30 p.m. that night, he had not returned home from his hike. And because this was so abnormal, it's at this time that his family reported him missing. Now, despite all of his hiking and mountaineering experience, Julian Sands chose a bad day to hike Mount Baldy. Extremely high winds and intense snow slammed the mountain on the afternoon of his hike, complicating the immediate effort to search for him and hopefully rescue him. Now, I'm not sure if Sands was aware of the bad weather conditions and chose to hike out anyways, or if it was an unpredicted storm, unpredicted weather, but regardless, the winter of 2023 consisted of a lot of bad days to hike Mount Baldy. In the weeks prior to Sands' hike, there were a whopping 14 calls for rescue on and around Mount Baldy. In fact, Sands wasn't even the only hiker to go missing in the area on the day of January 13th. That very same day, hiker Bob Gregory was heard for the last time and over a month later, his body was found about 300 feet from the summit of Mount Islip, nearby to Mount Baldy. The day that he was found, February 18th, marked the end of the mystery of Bob Gregory. But on February 18th, the mystery of Julian Sands was still very much alive and well. By this point, a lot was known about Sands' plan and his rough location. A few days after Sands was reported missing, his car was found at the base of Mount Baldy and officials received a few pings from his cell phone placing him on a ridge on the Baldy Bull Trail high up on the mountain. Numerous ground searches had been conducted, helicopters had been searching from the air, 
and drones were even being used to try to spot Sans or his gear. And yet, despite all of this, he still had not been located. Now, the search for Sans had numerous difficulties, the main one being the weather and winter conditions that were occurring on Mount Baldy. In the week after Sans' disappearance, storm after storm pounded Mount Baldy, dropping piles of snow that would easily conceal a body and any stray hiking gear. The dangerous conditions that that presumably led to Sand's disappearance in the first place also presented extreme risks for searchers, leaving them unable to thoroughly cover one of the key areas near Sand's last known location. Sand's last cell phone ping placed him on a ridge between Baldy Bowl and Good Canyon. And by the way, I just want to say this canyon, it's spelled G-O-O-D-E. I'm not sure if it's pronounced good or like goody or something else. I'm just gonna say good, but I'm sorry if that's wrong. But anyways, he was on the ridge between Baldy Bowl and Good Canyon, and it was likely that he ended up either falling or perhaps accidentally wandering into one of these two locations. And as the search for him dragged on into the summer, it was beginning to look like Good Canyon was the more obvious choice. Now this was because Baldy Bowl, the other choice, was a very popular destination for winter hikers, climbers, and skiers. And so the likelihood that Sands would have been discovered if he was there, and not just discovered, but discovered quickly, was very high. Good Canyon, however, was very seldom traveled. The terrain there was so treacherous and remote that it wasn't even safe to search the canyon on foot during the winter. Helicopters with advanced signal detection had searched it repeatedly with nothing to show. Finally, however, in June of 2023, the conditions were finally safe enough to allow a thorough search of Good Canyon on foot. One search team made their way down the canyon from the top and one team climbed up from the bottom. The two teams would presumably meet in the middle and therefore they would have covered the entire canyon. But even in the early summer conditions, this proved to be too difficult and too dangerous of a task. The teams ended up running out of daylight, leaving the middle section of Good Canyon unsearched. And a few days later, the group of hikers mentioned at the start of this video made their way right into that unsearched middle section. Now, this group of hikers was being led by a woman who preferred to remain anonymous, and she was very aware that they would be traversing through the area where Julian Sands likely perished. This group leader had climbed Good Canyon an impressive five or six times previously, making her very experienced in the difficult terrain. And it's even more impressive too, because my understanding is that Good Canyon does not have an established hiking trail running through it. So those who do attempt to climb it are gonna be bushwhacking through very dense brush. They're gonna be traversing loose dirt and scrambling over giant boulders. I don't think that many people hike Good Canyon to be honest. This woman who was the group's leader was fearful that they would accidentally stumble upon Julian Sands' remains. Due to the actor's fame and the mysterious nature of the case, it was being covered by the media much more than a typical missing hiker story would be. In fact, I'm willing to bet that pretty much every hiker who climbed Mount Baldy so far that year either knew about his disappearance or perhaps even had his disappearance fresh on their mind. And I imagine this would be even more true if they were among the few hikers who dared to take on Good Canyon. About three and a half hours into the climb, the group of hikers had already reached 8,400 feet in elevation. They had funneled into a spot with especially thick brush and because of that, members of the group spread out to try to increase their chances of finding a path of least resistance. And then, while they were searching, one of the hikers in the group spotted a lone boot. Now this boot was hidden so well that the woman leading the group actually walked right by it without seeing it. Soon after, the group found the second boot, which was a few yards further up. Next came some trekking poles, and then some human bones. Finally, the group found a pile of winter hiking clothing and inside a pocket, they found a driver's license. I can't even imagine what they were feeling when they grabbed the wallet, pulled out the license and read the name Julian 
Richard Sands. The mystery of what had happened to the famous actor had finally been solved. The only problem, however, was that wasn't exactly true. There still remains a few unanswered questions about Julian Sands' last hike, the first and most obvious of which is how and why did he die? The sheriff's department ruled Sands' cause of death as undetermined, which is understandable given his remains were stuck in such a harsh environment for months. I imagine Imagine it'd be hard to determine anything about what had happened given the condition of his remains. As of the time of this recording, we still haven't gotten a full autopsy report. The next unanswered question is how and why did Sands end up in Good Canyon in the first place? After all, he was hiking the Baldy Bull Trail which does not enter the canyon. We'll probably never know exactly what happened, but there are a few plausible theories. The first is that Sands could have gotten lost and then maybe fallen. The Baldy Bull Trail does traverse close to the canyon, so perhaps he got a little lost and then he accidentally fell in the steep terrain. Or maybe he got lost and then accidentally wandered down into the canyon and became too exhausted to make his way back out. Perhaps some combination of these scenarios happened and then his body was pushed further down the canyon by shifting snow or avalanches, something like that. And yet another somewhat controversial unanswered question is, if Julian Sands was an experienced climber and had some summited Mount Baldy 200 times before, then why was his body found without the necessary gear for the conditions that he was hiking in? Now, I have to tread lightly here. I'm not trying to victim blame. I'm not trying to blame Julian Sands or say that he deserved his fate, obviously not. I do think it's important to talk about the gear that he was found with or without, however, because I think that it could potentially save the lives of future hikers. So with that said, strapped to one of Julian Sands' boots was a micro spike, which is a piece of traction gear good for mild winter conditions and trails that aren't that steep. However, micro spikes would not have been sufficient for the conditions on Mount Baldy in January of 2023. My understanding is that crampons would have been a much safer choice. They're beefier and they provide much better traction on steep icy slopes. As an experienced climber and hiker, I'm sure Sands had worn crampons before and in fact only five days before his hike up Mount Baldy, a woman on the exact same trail, the Baldy Bull Trail, slipped and fell to her death. Just like Sands, she was wearing only micro spikes, no crampons, and no helmet, which was another piece of gear that Julian Sands was not found with. One of the men who discovered Sands' remains was quoted saying, I was a little shocked to see the micro spikes. They were just the wrong tools for the job at hand. There was also no signs that Sands was carrying an ice axe or a satellite GPS with an SOS button. Tragically odd gear choices from a man who had a high level of backcountry experience. Now, there is one very important caveat that I want to mention here, and that is Julian Sands' backpack was not found with his remains or the gear that was discovered. So it is possible that he was carrying some of this important gear and it just hasn't been discovered yet. Now, if this discovery happens and it turns out he did have crampons and he did have an ice axe, I'll make a correction video immediately. But I don't know, it just seems unlikely to me that he was up on such a treacherous part of the trail, but kept all that important gear, the crampons, the ice axe, tucked away in a backpack, not utilizing it. It just seems most likely that if he did have it, it would have been found where his remains were found and where the rest of his gear was found. Once again, I'm not trying to victim blame here, but the truth about Julian Sands' last hike is that it possibly, maybe even probably, would not have been his last hike if he had made some different gear choices. I think we can be honest about this without doing it in a way that is shaming him or even criticizing him. I'm really saying this because I want you all to think twice about the conditions that you're hiking in, especially in the winter, and the gear that you choose to bring with you. My heart goes out to Julian Sands' friends and family, and may he rest in peace. Thank you all for watching.